Let me call this meeting to order and establish uh, that we have a quorum. I'm going to start off with Basilio Villarreal, President. Jay Peña? President. Eduardo Ramirez? Not here. Dr. Veronica Barrera? Present. Noe Castillo? Present. Joe, uh, John A. Pope? Present. Eliazar Velasquez, Jr.? Present. Okay. At this time, let's have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, John Pope. This time, let's have approval of the uh, minutes. Regular board meeting uh, September 11th of the year 2023, and special board meeting uh, September 27th of the year 2023. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve agenda item one. Uh, it would be a agenda item three. Oh, I'm section three. I'm sorry. Stand corrected. I, uh, I motion to approve uh, section three on the agenda for today's session. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Velasquez. All those pro, uh, uh, in favor uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, uh, same sign. Motion uh, passes. At this time, public forum. No public forum. At this time, we go to recognitions. Before we start with recognitions, let me take this opportunity. And before we recognize anybody, I want to congratulate the bands of the Rio Grande City Rattler Band and the Gruya Gator Band. They all got straight ones. Uh, congratulations for a job well done. Good luck as you move on to regionals, but Ben, fantastic job. <laughs> With that said, let's go to the uh, October National Principal Month. Mr. Peña. Yes, sir. Good evening, members of the board, uh, audience, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are here this evening to recognize our sensational <coughs> campus principals. It is National Principals Month, so we are truly honored to have each and every one of them uh, you know, be the forefront and the ones leading all of our campuses. We're truly blessed and honored to have their dedication, the passion that they bring in education and helping our students and our staff, our employees uh, throughout the district. So we honor them this evening. Principals, please come forward. Principals, if you want to come forward, don't be shy.
Mr. Verrial, we have uh, one principal that's been ill and hasn't been with us, uh, River Grande City High School, Maribel Montemayor. So uh, we wish her a uh, speedy recovery as she uh, you know, comes back uh, from her illness. But uh, she is out of the hospital, so is doing a lot better. So we wish her well tonight. And we congratulate her as well. I think uh, I want to go around the table, and then I'll say it at the end. Uh, uh, Dr. Barrera, any comments for the principal? Just uh, congratulations and uh, keep up the good work. Okay. Iliasar. Congratulations, uh, principals. Thank you for taking care of our kids, and thanks for everything you do. Mr. Pope. Just thank you that thank you for everything that you do. I mean, you all are the head of the, each campus, so I mean, it falls on you all. But you all are doing a fabulous job. So thank you, Mr. Castillo. Again, thank you uh, for what you do. You guys carry. Uh, you guys are the captain of the ship, and you have a great responsibility. And uh, you know, thank you for your service, and God bless you. all Mr. Jay Pena. Hey, thank you all so much from the board. And if there's anything that the board can do to help, please uh, feel free to convey the message. And thank you so much for what you do and for taking the lead. And uh, we know we got great things ahead. So thank you again. On behalf of myself, let me just say to the principals, you're at the front lines. You're the ones who basically uh, deal with parents, deal with students. And uh, I don't know sometimes how you do it. Uh, frankly, uh, I know sometimes you, you get called at 2 o'clock in the morning because some alarm went off. So, or you get called at 10 o'clock because some, or 8 o'clock because uh, some boy is missing. But on behalf, I think, of the entire board, I think you are the, the main generals of this school. You are the, one, of the thing, one of the gears that makes this school go. And from the bottom of all our hearts, thank you for all the hard work you do. It does go appreciated. I know at times when, it's, when you're out there, it's tough. But I, I'll be honest with you, when the going gets tough, I mean, when the tough gets going, or we get tougher, basically. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, keep it up, and let's have a great year. At this time, let me go to the RGC GISD Technology Administration and Strategist. Yes, Mr. Verial, and members of the board, once again, we want to recognize our technology personnel, administrators, and strategists. They work very hard you know, throughout the school year, even in summer, making sure that our students and our teachers and all our staff has their devices up and running and <coughs> making sure that they have the up-to-date softwares running. Uh, you know, they're called upon on a spare of a moment and they're having to go to a lot of different places at the same time. So we want to value them and thank them, you know, for their hard work, their passion, their dedication to our district. So could you please uh, come forward? Yes. Okay. 
Again, uh, this is the RGC GISD Technology Administration Strategist. Dr. Barrera, word, uh, comments. I want to make gonna, everybody I, talk, I'm not good at public speaking. No, uh, but we're going to go first hey, and I'll get ideas. You, you uh -huh. I can't express my, what I think and feel. But go ahead, Mr. Lazar. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Sometimes we as board members, damos mucha lata. Ustedes son los que más molestamos, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you for everything. John? As time goes by, I find myself not even able to turn on the computer or figure stuff out, but my hat's off to you all because, I mean, you all are always on top of everything, so thank you for everything. Noe? Thank you for everything you all do uh, behind the scenes for everybody, and, uh, you know, uh, you guys are an instrumental part of everything that happens in, uh, in the district, so we really appreciate everything you all do. Thank you very much. Jay Peña. I'm Johnny Pope's computer guy, so I know a little bit about what it's like to constantly be labeled computer guy and be given every task in the room when it comes to firing up equipment and moving equipment. I know how complicated it is, and thank y'all so much for what y'all do. And it's not lost on us that you do it at every single meeting and every single event. So thank y'all. On behalf of the whole board, uh, thank you. Technology, it's everything about technology, whether it's cameras, internet, and every, everything is computer based. But from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all the job you do. I'll be frank with you. We're all very proud, and we know you do work real hard. So thank you very much. Okay. I still don't know what to say, but um, just thank you so much, and we appreciate you. We really do. You guys are always, like I said last time, you're always here till the end, and, and I do feel a little bit sorry that you guys have to wait for us, and, you know, we take our time. And um, thank you so much for waiting and for putting in the long hours and the hard work. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Now let's go to the 2023 Texas Dual Language Student Award Languages. Good afternoon, Mr. Villarreal, Board President, members of the Board, Mr. Peña, Superintendent of Schools. Senate Bill 671 allows a student to satisfy one credit of the two credits in a language other than English, LOTE, required for graduation if the student successfully completes a dual language immersion program under Texas Education Code 28. While, while in the elementary school. Texas Administrative Code 74 requires that a student who satisfies a low tech graduation credit requirement by successfully completing a dual language immersion program at an elementary school in accordance with criteria outlined in 74 must have the credit clearly indicated on the transcript. To successfully complete, complete a dual language immersion program, a student must uh, fulfill three criteria. The first one is participating in a dual language immersion program for, for at least five consecutive years. 
So these students that would be recognized this, after, this afternoon had been since kinder in the dual language program. And the second criteria is to achieve high levels of academic competence as demonstrated by performance of MITS or MASTERS, which are the highest levels in the state of Texas assessment of academic readiness, the STAR, in both English or Spanish in the reading and mathematics test. And the last criteria is to achieve proficiency in both English in the TELPAS and a language other than English, which in this case we have to administer the last links exam in Spanish, both in uh, writing, excuse me, in reading and in speaking. And these students achieve at the advanced and advanced high levels in both English and Spanish as well. So in 2022, we recognized eight students for the first time, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you today uh, 19 students who will be recognized for achieving this, uh, this honor. So students, as I, as I call your name, please come forward to be recognized. And we're going to start with Alberto and Celia uh, Barrera Elementary students. Of course, they're now in sixth grade, but they've, last year they were in fifth grade. Jaima, Denisha, Meraz, Araline, Nicole, Galvan, Luca, Muñoz, and Kimberly Trevino. If you are present, you can come forward. From Alto Bonito Elementary, we have Magali Garcia. From Dr. Mario Ramirez Elementary, Adán Isael González Torres. From General Ricardo Sanchez Element Elementary, Jesús Rodrigo Cano Peña, Jorge Antonio Cano Peña, and Saida Marroquín. From Gruya Elementary, we have Lee Ray Garcia, La Union Elementary, Tatiana Hernandez Lopez, <laughs> Ringle Elementary, Miguel Angel Ortiz Valderrama, Simena Alvarez, Marisol Estrada, Steven Lopez, and Damian and 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 Andre Villavicencio Hernandez. And from Roque Guerra Elementary, Ramon Adrián Villarreal, Diana Isabel Ovalle Garcia, and Kimberly Cassandra Perez. Congratulations to all these students.
Dr. Barrera, comments? <laughs> um, congratulations to all the teachers, all the strategists, all the directors, uh, all the kids. Um, I'm very proud of you guys. I don't know, are you listening to me, kiddos, or are they the kids? Um, I, I am very proud of you. This is like a very big accomplishment. I was seeing the, the scores for the star and, you know, people that their first language is, Spanish, is English sometimes have a hard time passing these tests and so you coming from, you know, uh, uh, Spanish as your first language is, is very awesome that you um, have passed these and that you're doing so well and everything. So congratulations. Eliazar. Uh, congratulations, kids. Very proud of you all. Mr. Martinez, great job. And keep up the good work. Mr. Pope. Congratulations and uh, keep up the good work and it'll take you very far. Noe, congratulations on your accomplishment and uh, you know, uh, great job. Uh, you guys are doing a, a, a wonderful, wonderful, you get a great award and keep up the good work. Thank you for all the teachers and your uh, principals for, for the hard work also. Thank you very much. Jay Peña. Cuando parqué el carro, me iba a reversear. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, Director Martinez was actually one of the first people to teach me that those weren't words. And he also taught me that there was a Mundo 21, which means there's 21 Spanish-speaking countries, and the U.S. is one of them. It's a big world out there for Spanish speakers, and I'm glad that you guys are doing so well. I'm going to tell you something, already speaking Spanish the way you do. I'm a lawyer. You're already smarter than me because you speak Spanish better than I do. So thank you all so much for what you, and congratulations. On behalf of the board, let me start off, let me thank all the parents, because really at the end of the day, it starts with the parents, then it starts with the children, then it starts with the teachers, then it starts with the principal, and then it starts with Jesus Martinez. So to all of you, congratulations for a job well done, and on behalf of the board, keep it up. It's hard to do, but keep it up. You're going to do fantastic things in the future. Thank you. At this time, we go to reports and information. Uh, let's do updates of, on student and staff highlights. Good evening. Mr. Peña, Mr. President, and distinguished members of the board. On behalf of Mr. Osuna, we are honored to present our monthly video showcasing the exceptional achievements of within our district. Our video emphasizes the remarkable contributions of our dedicated staff and students who constantly inspire us with their outstanding endeavors. We present to you our highlight video for the month of September. Please enjoy. <coughs> September was sensational, and October is shaping up just to be as great. General Ricardo Sanchez Elementary received a special letter from President Joe Biden acknowledging the remarkable accomplishment of Odyssey of the Mind for their tremendous achievement as world champions. Recipients of the E3 Plus program, Grow Your Own program, were acknowledged during a board meeting. We would like to congratulate all the recipients. Rio Grande City Gruya ISD held a professional learning day where teachers and administrators became the students and received training in new technologies. And National IT Day, RGCGISD, honored and celebrated the incredible team behind the scenes of our school district, the Technology Department. We would like to thank the Technology Department for everything they do for our school district. Joe D. Mihalis and Emma Herrera were recognized as the 2023 TAAF Summer Track Program Honor recipients. On behalf of RGCGISD, we would like to congratulate these two extraordinary athletes. Rio Grande City Gruya ISD celebrated National Security Officer Appreciation Week. These dedicated individuals do so much to ensure the safety of our students and staff every single school day. We're thrilled to announce that our very own Rio Grand City High School Band has been named the KRGV Band of the Week. We are incredibly proud 
of each and every one of you. Kuruya High School held their annual homecoming parade and it was a success. We would like to thank all parents, students, and staff for making this such a successful event. Rio Grande City Gruya ISD hosted a Go for Gold Childhood Cancer presentation. Our Rattlers and Gators warmly welcome several of our district courageous students who are either currently battling cancer in remission or in memory of their bravery. These special students who sadly lost their lives to this disease, players wore gold wristbands in support provided by Rio Grande City Chick-fil-A and the Greater Gold Foundation. This has been Lexi Elise Gutierrez in fourth grade at AC2E Elementary. Thank you. Item two, Texas uh, report on Texas Strategist Leadership TSL program. Board President, members of the board, Mr. Pena, audience, uh, I'm here to present on the Texas Strategic Leadership uh, Initiative that we have partnered with Region 1. There was uh, several uh, committee meetings at the state level with TEA. Uh, Ms. Ayala was part of the planning for the TSL as far as including districts from Region 1. Uh, after the planning was done most of last school year, they selected several uh, school districts across the state of Texas. I think it's 38 across the state of Texas from Region 1. There are three, one small school district, one medium being Rio Grande, and then one large school district that were selected to be part of the first cohort. Uh, we are going to briefly share with you uh, what it is. Next slide. Our partners at Region 1 are Sandra Cavazos and Brenda Armitrani. They are basically our lead uh, folks at Region 1. Sandra Cavazos is the executive administrator and Brenda is her director. For the TSL team for the district, we have Mr. Adolfo Peña, superintendent, Dr. Salinas, superintendent for HR, myself, and Ms. Ayala, who is doing the accountability and data piece. The objective, of course, is to introduce a strategic leadership district framework very similar to what we did at Gruya Elementary with the ESF, but this is called the EDF. So it's the Effective District Framework. Uh, along, like I said, with our school district, we have Rio Hondo, Rio Grande City High School, or Rio Grande City CISD, and PSJA is the other school district. So the large being PSJA, we're the me medium school district, and Rio Hondo is the small school district for Region 1. Going to the next slide that's got a map of the state of Texas. One more, one more. That shows you the 35 plus LDAs across the state who are engaging in TSL. And we are the first of the cohort, which is the 23-24 cohort. And what the, the rationale behind this program is that if we engage in the cohort right now, like we are in our district, they're hoping that they can get feedback. We're kind of like the experimental group. Uh, they're getting, trying to get feedback on how they can improve this framework for adoption going into next school year. So what is the Texas Strategic Leadership? It is, again, the Effective District Framework and the Texas Strategic Leadership Program with TA. And the, what the priority is or what the intent is, if you go to the next slide, it is to establish a framework that districts can be able to follow. And it's not necessarily to improve, but to be able to have sustained improvement and success. So sometimes, like we did with ESF, one of the things that we encountered uh, with ESF, which is the program that we engaged in at Gruya Elementary, was that once you improve and you get to that, you know, where you're no longer uh, required improvement, there is no support system at the state level that will ensure sustainability. So one of the things that they're hoping with the EDF is that this is not a, an improvement plan. They didn't necessarily look at schools that needed improvement. They looked at schools that have exhibited highs and lows, meaning they've had uh, peaks and valleys where they've done well and maybe not so well, and how do we support a district to be able to have that continued district uh, support to be able to have student success. If you go to the next slide. Uh, basically the framework is it focuses on student outcomes, 
the student experience and what the intent is that we have an aligned campus system uh, together with an aligned district system. If you go to the following slide, there are several levers that are built in to support superintendents. I know Mr. Peña is being coached by Sandra Cavazos, meaning that they meet together once a week, whether in person or via Zoom. I'm being coached by Brenda Armitrani, the director, and what it is is to provide support to us in the following uh, levers. Executive coaching, learning labs, and exemplar visits. We had the opportunity back in September, our team of four, to visit uh, Aldean ISD, and we visited classrooms, I don't know, it was like 15 or 20 classrooms in the course of two days. Then last week, or was it the week before? When was Region 1 here? Last week, I don't know, the weeks are going by so quickly, Dr. Salinas and I were talking about that. So they were here last week and we visited classrooms very similar to the same manner we visited classrooms at Aldean. We visited elementary, middle school, and high school classrooms looking for certain, they have a, a criteria and a checklist of things that we're supposed to be looking for. So we will be following the cohort model, not to say that this is what's gonna be in place, but it is what they have in place right now. We are currently engaging in the landscape analysis, which means they're looking at our curriculum programs, they're looking at what we have going on in the classroom and saying, okay, you're saying you have this instruction, but when we go and we observe, this is what we see. Are those two systems aligned in parallel? And if they're not, how can we support your district to make sure that we have that, that parallel look? They're also uh, working on planning and performance management supports for our district. If you go to the next slide, it basically tells you the superintendent and their leadership teams will leave the process with, of course, a landscape analysis, a strategic plan with prioritized research-based strategies to pursue. So what it is is at the end of the year or at the end of our cohort, we should have a strategic plan in place that can be sustained long after we're here because one of the things that they've seen in districts across the state of Texas is sometimes the administration changes or you get a new principal or you get a new superintendent or sometimes you get a new board that just comes in with a whole new different set of administration, then there is no uh, strategic plan as to how the district is working to get somewhere. So what they're saying is that this plan should be a plan that's gonna be taking three to five years to completely implement. The plan will be based on high level plan of Im implementation and based highly on the performance management, which means, of course, the accountability. So as far as we wanna get away from accountability, it's not something that's gonna go away. And then, of course, it should be forward movement on stakeholders and alignment for change management. So that is basically what they're helping us establish in the district. And then, of course, there's other slides there. The following slide just tells you who we're in partnership with. But what I wanted to do today is just kind of give you an overview of what we've done. Basically, right now, we've uh, done the, the coaching piece. We have engaged in the learning labs. They have come to visit us. And we have been submitting artifacts, meaning we've been submitting the type of curriculum that we're covering in our schools, and they're trying to determine whether it's closely aligned or not. So I don't know if there are any uh, questions from the board members. Any questions? If not, we'll proceed. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's go to the next one, our report on 2022-2023 bilingual ESL dual language annual evaluation. Yes, Mr. Villarreal, board president, members of the board, Mr. Peña, like every year before Mr. November the 1st, I have to present to you the bilingual uh, ESL and dual language evaluation, and we have a short video, uh, less than two okay. minutes, and if Mr. you have Martinez, any questions, let me know after that. In the future, or anybody, if you're going to address the board, dress them as the board. There's okay. no, pre we're all the same here, so right. I don't want Basilio Villarreal or anything, it's just board members of RGCG ISD because in this board everybody has is one vote so yes, in, in future it just dresses as the board yes, thank sir. you so we, we have the video ready good evening this is the bilingual dual language ESL program evaluation for 2022-2023 presented by Jesus Martinez and the title three strategies this evaluation is governed by Texas administrative code 89.1265 RGC GISD follows dual language one way at the elementary level and ESL pull out at the secondary level. For 2022-2023, TEA approved our bilingual exception for 13 teachers and our ESL waiver for 15 teachers. Some teachers have registered to take the test with two teachers passing. The 22-23 STAR and TELPAS data is preliminary as TEA will not be releasing the A through F academic accountability ratings until late October or after. 
the areas to address for the 23-24 school year regarding emergent bilinguals at the elementary level will be third through fifth grade math and fifth grade science. At the secondary, secondary level, they will be addressing the seventh grade math. At the high school level will be English one and English two. Also, as required by law, we are presenting a comparison analysis from beginning of year to end of year for early childhood showing progress monitoring. We are now being evaluated in a point system which requires schools meeting long-term goals. Early College High School, Dr. Mario Ramirez Elementary and General Ricardo Sanchez Elementary are projected to pass or be as close as possible to meeting the long-term goal. The bilingual ESL department assesses students both beginning of year and end of year in English and Spanish to determine language proficiency growth. For English, we use Telpas K-12 through and for Spanish, we use Los Links. We supplement instructions through our software programs that address the cognitive, linguistic, and academic needs of the, our students. Lexia Core 5, Imagine Learning Espanol, Summit K-12 with Listening in the Speaking Domains, and Rosetta Stone. The 2023 Results Driven Accountability will be released until late October or after. For that reason, you have the 2022 results. Our bilingual enrollment for 22-23 was 7,789, 83%, with 88 students meeting reclassification or exiting the program. To finalize, every year, the ELPA committees send emerging bilingual uh, progress reports to parents and inform them of testing accommodations. Teacher professional de development was provided through the year. The binder is available at the bilingual department office. Bilingual ESL parental and Title III trainings were conducted in collaboration with the FACE department and TEA. Title III webinar watch parties. As required by law, we offer summer school for our incoming kinder and first grade emerging bilingual students. Thank you for your attention. Mr. Martinez, thank you for every, all the job, all the good job that you do. Thank your staff, everybody involved, the parents, the students. Thank you for all the, the work you do. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, item four, consider a report on RGC GISD district audit report, DAR. Yes, sir, Mr. Varial. On this item, uh, because it's our audits, uh, we're going to move it to executive session. Not a problem. Let, uh, the report on item four in this particular section has been moved to the executive session. At this time, uh, before we begin with the agendas, uh, I just want to clear, clarify one thing. Discussion will be held to three or four minutes. Mr. Baltasar Salazar is the, I call it the gatekeeper, uh, because we have a long uh, 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 agenda. So I want to keep everybody down. If you have questions, not a problem for three or four minutes. But after that, uh, we need to move on. With that said, let's go to consent agenda item one and two. Do I have a motion for consent agenda item one and two? Motion to uh, approve consent agenda items one and two as presented in the board packet. And with regard to uh, item one, just to request that the donors be publicly recognized without mentioning any amounts if possible. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Second by Mr. Pope. Okay, before we take a vote, uh, can you just give us who the donors are? You don't have to give the amounts, sir, just the donors. Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, so the donors are Mrs. T. Arezola, Only Love Hospice LLC, Luis Delgado, and Revive for Ringgold Nonprofit Program. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. M motion passes. At this time, uh, uh, let's go to action items. Item three, uh, four, five, six, and seven. Do I have a motion to approve that with some discussion? Item Three through uh, seven. Through seven. Um, so moved. We have a motion by Mr. J. Pena. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. Any discussion? Item seven. Item seven. Go ahead. I don't know if we have, an, do we have that in the packet. I, sorry. Chris is here if you need to ask him any questions. I wanted is to make sure I had an item seven. There we go. 
No, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. You okay. Yeah, I reviewed it. Any yeah. questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Same sign. Motion carries. This time, let's go to uh, item A. If we can have a motion, item A, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. They're all pay applications. Do we have a motion? And then we'll have discussion. So move. Second. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. We're, no, we, we'll discuss after we take a second. Second. A okay. second. Okay. Now we can discuss. Through uh, 16. 16. So I, let me let me let me begin. Is the architect here, sir? Yeah. I, I want to start with the discussion. Yeah. So so item nine is Millennium Engineers, and then 10 and 11 is Gerlock, and then okay. I'm going to start through yeah. 16 is NM contracting. Yeah, right. I want to start with the with the uh, my my question is real simple. NM contracting. They're way behind schedule. The completion date was going to be when, sir? The, co the completion date for. Uh, uh, for the MPC is uh, July the second okay. uh, of this year, uh, so we've been going over our time limit. Uh, they have uh, documentation on on some uh, some delays of the project. Uh, we don't have them in our hand yet, but we have an idea what they are. Uh, how much of the project is still pending, sir? Uh, more or less. More or less. Uh, in payments, after we pay this, how much is still 25 pending? Twenty-five percent, more or less. Okay, let me ask a question. Can you, for the next board meeting, I, I, I talked to those people earlier today that, under no circumstances, I don't think we're going to pay any more applications till they finish the job. And after they finish the job, if there's any liquidated damages, you are in charge of finding out what liquidated damages we have. But I don't think after this pay application, I don't think we should bring another pay application till they complete the job. And then you determine what liquidated damages we have, uh, if we have any. I uh, I told them exactly that, and they were they concurred that uh, they were okay uh, about not getting paid until they finish the job. Uh, liquidated damages beyond uh, 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 delays that are not uh, uh, excusable. For example, delays that the contractor has no power over. You know, we give them those days, but if it delays due to their uh, not having enough, uh, uh, you know, labor force to, uh, to finish the project, that's certainly at, on them. At the end of the day, sir, you're the architect, so you're going to tell us what's justified and what's not justified. Twenty-five percent of the project is still pending, so there's quite a bit still pending. But I just want to make it clear that to those people that we're not going to pay any more. In my opinion. We shouldn't pay another pay application until they finish because they're way overdue. And at that time, you analyze everything. And as far as liquidated damages, you you tell us. They're going to say one thing. You're going to say another thing. But we're going to trust you, whatever you say. Yeah, and liquidated damages are $500 per calendar day. Uh, well, you decide what we have. We have 25% till pending. So there's still a lot of money out there. But I just I don't think we should pay another penny till they finish the job. And I think they're well aware of that. That's my question. I don't have anything else. Any other question? It's 12, 13, and 14, right? And 15, 16, and 16 for yeah. NM. Those are my questions, and that, that's the one I have the, the, the most problems with about, about paying those people anymore. Uh, they got to finish that job. We need to be in that building, sir. Yes, sir. I think we made it clear. Okay. Any what, other questions? For, for 12, uh, what was the change proposal request? Go ahead. Is it first one to that? Mm-hmm. Uh, the change proposal request for the new welding shop. Can you go through that, Mr. Garza? And the amount. Okay. Change proposal number 12 uh, uh, are f four items. Uh, one of them being the removal of a, a metal ceiling panels from the welding shop. Uh, that uh, building had some 
some uh, metal ceiling panels and they had to remove them so they could uh, hang uh, uh, exhaust ducts for the welding area uh, to uh, hang uh, electrical and you know stuff like that so uh, it, it's uh, it was uh, three thousand three hundred and nine dollars and eighteen cents and another item that was part of that the other one was a thousand seven hundred and then the other one five thousand six hundred the thing is i'm concerned because we went through this also i guess is this common for us to be getting all these um changes i i think that when we get these bids and when they when you all you know go over everything you should foresee some of these things and then it feels kind of like we get surprised later on oh we're going to change this or and it's always more money and so i'm just wondering like is that something that happens often um because i know like in private uh, places you make you know you make the yes. error and uh, you you're, have to you're responsible that, for that, it yes. yeah um well, this uh, the item the i think it's a 1787 dollars yeah th that item had to do with uh, not having the testing laboratory on board and uh, it was uh, a district matter that was uh, eventually uh, you know, solved, but uh, the contractor had to wait uh, to proceed from the foundation until he got that testing done. So what happened is uh, uh, there was no uh, testing laboratory to test the concrete uh, for the foundation, and they just had to sit on it, and, and it's, uh, they're asking for, for days on that. Uh, and, and, uh, and that amount uh, as well. What is the total of the amount of the change orders? Uh, I don't have a. I think it's like ten, 10 or twelve thousand dollars. Okay. How much is the contingent? Uh, the contingency, uh, I don't recall it, but uh, we usually have like a four percent on it. What's the total of the project? Uh, it's uh, nine hundred thousand and change. So our contingent is thirty-six thousand dollars. Well, I think it's less because initially we we had uh, estimated that that project was going to be less than that. It's like five hundred thousand, but we had estimated at the beginning. So. Uh, so even at five, it's twenty thousand. Twenty thousand dollars. That's correct. How much would if, if we pay this? How much is still left in the container? Uh, around eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Do you think? So let me ask you: Are these things that were needed, sir, or not needed, or overlooked by whom, or? Well, that one uh, item had to do with the testing and, and we went through uh, uh, through several uh, RFQs to get a testing laboratory uh, for both uh, the middle school and for the welding and uh, for uh, the cosmetology barber. So uh, uh, that, that was something that... Uh, we were having trouble getting testing, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And, and uh, another one is uh, when they took out that metal ceiling the the wall the the concrete the masonry wall didn't go to the bottom of the steel deck, and that's a uh, a code uh, uh, requirement. So another item in this change order is to extend the wall to the bottom of the steel deck. Yeah, this is a small one, and and I understand, but there's been bigger ones, and I just keep oh, seeing. Yes. And so there was one of $60,000, you know? And so I just yes. think like, why are we getting all these surprises? If it's 10, 10, 60, 10, 50, like, you know, there are things, there it's money that's coming out yes, that we weren't and, uh, counting on. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the uh, price for construction has increased tremendously in the last uh, two years. And that's, uh, and then the, the COVID situation has, uh, uh, slow down material deliveries. So all of that stuff is impacting all the construction work. And, and I don't mean just here, I mean throughout the nation. So it, it's uh, all of that combined is what's, uh, so what's causing. Let me, let me ask, are, do you think this ch change order is justified? Sir? Uh, there was only one that uh, I'm recommending three of the four, okay. but the fourth one, uh, we weren't gonna recommend it, but what happened is they, uh, so they wouldn't fall behind any further. They did the work before the change order was accepted. 
And uh, let's see, that, that item, And I don't have it here because of that, uh, but I, I believe it was three thousand uh, dollars, and it was to cover some plumbing walls, some plumbing pipes that went up the wall. Uh, and I was not going to recommend that, basically because there's a lot of uh, pipes and uh, wires and stuff in that building because it's a welding shop, and it does not have a ceiling. So because there's already a lot of stuff going on. That one item, the, the fourth item, uh, I was not going to recommend it. But since then, they have installed it uh, just uh, to, to get ahead of the project and not stay behind. So that's strictly up, uh, up to you on whether to accept what that. What do you recommend, sir? Well, it's, uh, I think uh, because we're still within the contingency amount, I'm okay with it. You know, if. Uh, if we were, if we didn't have a contingency to cover stuff like that, then uh, maybe not. But because of that, uh, I think we're okay. But it's strictly your call. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Any more discussion? If I may, I, mm -hmm. uh, board board members and Mr. Garza, we did actually have bids. We we went out for bids to get the testing done done and if I, I believe there was a couple of companies that bid out for it and they were taking longer th than expected but we were looking at just the testing at like 50 or sixty thousand dollars and if we went through the contractor they we got basically the contractor price so that ten thousand dollars or so of testing that we took would have if we would have bid it out it would have been about fifty thousand dollars so we decided for purposes of expedient to be an expedient and efficient we let the contractor go ahead and bid out the testing because, again, they couldn't pour the concrete without one soil samples, and then they needed samples of the actual concrete. So they got a third party to do the testing, and we didn't go through the engineers because, again, it would have cost us easily. I remember this one because it was, I thought it was outrageous with what the companies were charging us when we could go directly to the testing company. So we had the contractor go, and that 10000 if I'm not mistaken, it was in the fifty or $60,000. So we ended up saving about $40,000. So we did dip into the contingency fee, but we also saved about $50,000 in engineering fees. Okay. We have a bid. We have, I mean, we have a bid. We have a motion. We have a second. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Mr. Riel, I'll be abstaining from item 10 and 11. Okay. Let the record show that Mr. Noy Castillo is abstaining. What number? 10 and 11. Sir. 10 and 11. Okay. Okay, let's keep on going. Uh, can I have a motion on uh, basically items 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21? And then we'll have discussion. A motion to approve the pay applications presented. In items 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 by Hellas and Warren Group Architects. Do we have a second? What are we um, reimbursed, getting reimbursed for the Warren okay. Group? Okay, Warren. let's get a second and then we'll go from there. A second. Okay, now we, now we have discussion. Go ahead. Uh, if I may, I just, just want to clarify. This is a, an issue that came out last time. This was tabled for this meeting because originally the, our contract was for 12 the cost of the Performing Arts Center that we based the contract on was $12 million. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, the Warren Group came back and told the district and advised the district that it, the cost had gone up and it was up $19 million. But our contract said $12 million. So I went back, I looked at it, I spoke with Mr. Robles, and our contract is still $12 million, and they charge us 7%. So that's what we're sticking to. Uh, I, they, their position was, well, the cost has gone up, and I said, we haven't spent that money yet. So for our purposes and the contractual purposes, they're stuck at $12 million. So that's all we're paying them, which is 7% of that. So Mr. Salazar, a question uh, with that. 
how much did we invest in the or spent in that fine arts, the preparation, the architects, everything? I, I believe the seven million comes out to seven percent of the twelve million. I believe it's eight hundred and forty thousand dollars. Then there was another a hundred, and I believe it's one hundred and seventy-six thousand. We, more we or less spent that much in for other uh, acoustic specialists that came in to help to, for the design. So that's how much the district has spent uh, so far if you approve this today. And basically <coughs> all the architectural fees would be paid. And that will not be, be done, the fine arts? Will we, not right now we don't, we don't know where we're headed. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I don't know we're gonna do it. I don't I say just yes, want to I don't point say out no. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is if it's $19 million, it's gonna be tough. The only way to do that particular project is some way somehow bet it down. Uh, that's I'm the just only concerned how we got to spending so much money in something that is kind of like out like it yes no like how could we move through all these steps and hire these people and get all this going without knowing that we would be able to do the end result. I, it's just I can't. I, I think Mr. Garza said it best and I think it's, it's true right. You look at construction costs and, and take <coughs> Veterans Middle School. We built that for $80 a square foot. The La Grulla is at $400 a square foot. So the bottom line is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when we went out for those bonds, our money is over two years became 78%. And what do I mean? Inflation ate it up. Projects were a lot more expensive. Like the Grulla, for example, Grulla Middle School that, thank God it's going on uh, as we speak. Uh, everything turned out perfect, but we had projected that school at $35 million. Turned out to be 44, and why is that? Again. You look at the price of construction, the price of materials, price of everything went up by about anywhere between 22 and 30 percent in construction. So basically, our money's shrink. So we're, we okay. are, I think, right now looking for alternatives how we can do something. Okay. Uh, but but you're right that we spent I, that we spent a million dollars on it. Yes, that it's crazy. excessive. Yes, that uh, we we needed to make a smaller project. Yes that COVID hit, yes, that construction materials went up, yes. The only thing we can do is see how we can maneuver or what we can do to make it, to make it some way or somehow. And with that, what I want to say is that I want us to really be careful with what, you know, like be very cautious with what we vote for and, and really discuss and really investigate and make sure that what we're doing, you know, is, is well thought and it's well um, investigated because we need to, you know, kind of correct these. The bottom line, we need to be transparent, ma'am. And, and that's, that's like I'm gonna say, how much have we spent? We spent a million dollars. Is a performing arts center too big? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, that, that at the end of the day, that we projected that all these costs were gonna go up. Think about it, and I, it, it blows my mind, but we built a veterans middle school for about 12 to $14 million. 12 to $14 million, and you look at the new middle school we're building is costing us $45 million. That's insane. And, and all I'm trying to say is a lot of things hit us, but I agree with you. We need to be transparent. We need to do what we need to do with money, but we have to put it out there. And like you said earlier, as far as change orders, as far as things, we need to be very diligent and not allow things of that nature. And that's like we need to bring it out to the light. The idea is we need to, we need to be transparent with everybody. And what it is is what it is. Yes. Thank you. Was there a possibility of a workshop to open up discussion on the... Uh I can say that's not yeah. a problem. And then uh, just to, for the records, 19 and 20, that's what we're discussing, it's the Warren Group, and then item 21, which is among the motions, is a SIGNAC, so. Mr. Wait, Verial, if I may. Oh, yeah, go ahead. And, uh, members of the board, when we first uh, started planning for this facility, we went out on bond. At that time, the architect gave us figures of 7.5 million. Once we went out on bond, it was approved that we went through to COVID. Once we brought to the board so we can start to design it, the estimates from the architect was 12 million. So we started to see how we could uh, budget for that. Uh, after that, in the last uh, six to eight months, that number has gone up to 19 million. So that is where you know the price is still from the architect. We don't know until we bid it out, but those are the figures that were given to us. That's why we considered it at that time. Yeah, and like I say again, Gruya uh, Middle School. Mr. Garza, where's Mr. Garza? Yeah. Agria Middle School, when we initially first budgeted Agria Middle School, wasn't it at around $35 million, correct, sir? Uh, yes, sir, that's correct. And, and, and what did it finally come out at? It came out at $45 million. Which is 10 more million dollars. And 
and whether it's price of copper, whether it's price of lumber, oh. all construction, you know. And the idea for us at the time is we built it because we decided to go because <clears throat> anytime you wait, guess what? It's, they're going to go higher, correct? They're going to go higher. So we, we, we hope uh, that it goes down. Yeah, and I don't even know, uh, know how the, the market can stand all of this. But uh, we haven't seen any signs of it slowing down. Well, the great thing, I, if I had to say one thing, Gruya Middle School is going on strong. Uh, the district wasn't out a penny. We didn't pay a penny. Thank you to Mr. Baltasar Salazar for doing a good job. Thank you, sir. But everything's going well at the, at the middle school. Construction is going good. <laughs> and the great thing for us, we are not out of pennies. So Mr. Salazar, thank you for the work you did. You're welcome. With that said, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. Mr. Real, I got up same from uh, 19 and 20, and I approve all the other items. Okay. Let the record show that um, uh, no is abstaining for 19 and 20. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, uh, can we have a motion on item 22, 23, and 24? All right. A motion to ratify and approve the requisitions that are noted in items 22 and 23. And in that motion, uh, a motion to approve uh, items 24 as presented in the board packet. C can we add a, a thing to it, Mr. <coughs> uh, J. Peña? On item 24, as long as we're accepting the, the, the best the best bid or the, the lowest bid or the best RFP or the lowest bid, you know. And, and I just want to clarify that we're taking the best bid or the, or the best RFP. I think that's inherent in the motion, but, yeah, but I, I would I, amend I, as I would such. like to add it to it because I, I at the end of the day, we need to take the best price or the best RFP. The only thing I request, I think, is that there's three, one, two, three, four, five RFPs in there. Right. And we also 12, have, yeah. and we have another one, uh, if, I could, if you could add to the end up too. This is from a grant. I think you all got it. It's, it's a grant. We're not paying a penny for that. Yeah, this is, yeah, 2418. This is one of them. I, I think uh, 2418 is already considered in the motion for item 24, but I'll amend, as noted by Mr. Villarreal, and I'll also include this amendment of 2418, and I'll just reserve, if there's going to be any discussion on item 24, anything regarding RFP 24, 12, 13, 15, 16, and 18, that it be reserved for closed session because they relate to security matters. Okay. Well, I know item number 24 there I know you say the best or lowest bid item 24 is actually not going with the lowest but they're recommending triple R fire so okay I guess, I guess we're going with that one right? yes What's going on with that one sir okay. yes and if I may um, in reference to that as, as you mentioned we are not going with the lowest but based off of what we received into references projects that they've completed uh, the lowest bidder is not in that scope of work, they did not take care of things that pertain to access controls. So that's why we are going with the second lowest or the second best offer. I didn't understand, Chris. Can you repeat yourself? Of course. So as you can see, there are three uh, submissions. And we do have the lowest that came in at 89.7. Here, Yes. So based off of that, that particular vendor or company that submitted does not do the scope of work that we are requesting for. They do not take care of that. Based off of references, projects that they've completed, things like that, they don't do that type of work. So that's why we went ahead and went with the second lowest or best option, which would be triple R. So that first bidder does not do that type of work? Uh, no. So why did they bid? I mean, it's open to everyone. Anyone can submit. If I was, let's say, to have a company, I could submit if I wanted to, but we don't so have to So you're go. positively positive that they don't do that type of work? Based off of what they submitted, of references, projects completed, they do not have anything that pertains to that. <coughs> we I just want to make sure. I, I just want to make sure that if we're not taking the lowest bid, mm -hmm. that we're doing it because there's a good reason to not do it. Yes, sir. If you can we if just you, review it, and make sure it's it's in the we're good. Yes, with that's it. what I was going to say. If it's if we need to table it or put it, you know, to bring it back, could could we could could we kick this one out and you study this a little bit more? I hate, to, I hate to leave money on the table, and what I mean, I hate to give money away if we don't have to, but at the end, if they've never done it, you know. Was the lowest one JJ's? Yes. Yeah, if I've seen the references and other things, other things that I've asked you for, and I don't think they have a big scope of practice. They don't do a lot of. Okay, so if, if, if you're okay with it, approving the second bidder, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's we, approve we, what we're I saying. Answer. I am. Okay. And, and you could also go for the, for your best and final offer. 
Well, it's because that's what they're here for, to see what their references, to see who can do the best job for the best buck. And if and it's like Mr. Vedal mentioned, I mean, we're here for uh, purposes of transparency. So that's why I did mention, and Mr. Pope brought it up, you know, why are we not going with the lowest one? So that's the reason why. And that's what we need to do all the time. If we're not going to go with the lowest, we have to get good rationale why. But the bottom line, let's be transparent. Whatever it is, it is. That's all I say. Yes. Okay. And, ju and just uh, also to note, Whenever we put out bids, we do request certain forms, certain things to be submitted. And based off of the three that submitted, two of them submitted everything that was needed. But and JJ at this point in time did not submit everything that was needed. So that's also a reason why. The liability you know. insurance and the list of equipment. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Not a problem, sir. Yeah. If, you're, if you're recommending those companies, yes, sir, I, I got no I problem. Do. Okay. And I do want to mention that on the, what I presented to you all right now or gave you all on the separate attachment, it is the same thing. Um, we're not going with the lowest one. We're going with the second lowest one. And it's based off of projects, works, things that they submitted. So just I so have, you're aware of that. I have Which no problem if you're recommending, if you're mm -hmm. saying that the other company has no, has never done that work and you don't feel confident, that's fine. They're, off, you, they're RFP, so yeah. we can move back and forth. And like 2415, it, it's right? Here. It's a separate document. Yes, 2014, the window film, the one I gave to you. Okay, and the other one uh, that you're also recommending that is in the lowest bid is 2418? Is that what you're saying? Okay. 2418 and it would be 2415. Got it. Those so then two. I'll amend my motion. Okay. And, and I do want to mention that on CSP 2416, um, we are not going to, we do not have it right now. We did not have submissions, so we are going to bring it to the next board meeting. So 2416, we're, we're not, we're not including it? No, sir. Okay. So, so can, I, can I have a, let's, can I have a, let's start again. Uh, le, let's approve item 22, 23, and 24 uh, with uh, item oh, 24, Mr. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, uh, so, so the motion is to approve items 22, 23, and 24, but with regard to 24, um, to uh, table item 2416, okay. and also with regard to 2415 and 2418, to approve uh, not necessarily the, the lowest bidder, but the recommendation of, of the business department okay. um, based on qualifications. Do we have a second? Second. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Let's Thank go you. to the next one. Uh, I, uh, item 25, can I have a motion to approve item 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30? And then we have some discussion. I so move. Second? I second. Okay. second. Okay. We have a first and we have a second. Any discussion? I think a lot of them are grant-based. I think uh, item 26 is a grant. Um, uh, item 28 is a grant. Um, item 20, 30 are, is a grant. So basically, most of them are grant-related, uh, basically. And the first one, I believe, uh, they're talking about the um, pest control. It's just... Uh, the pest control has to do continuing education, and we need a asbestos training, uh, uh, not asbestos training, but asbestos uh, audit, and it's only $3,200, but uh, it's, it's well worth it. But mo the majority are, are grants. Yeah, it's uh, 4,900. Yeah. So, so with that said, we went through what I, to what item, okay? That was, uh, so the motion is, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll know it okay. with a little more detail if I could. Uh, so the motion is to approve the authority to engage in the grant requirements requested for the Strong Foundation, the renewal of the SWIFT K-12 services, and the research and data sharing agreement with Maya consulted, Consulting presented as action items 26, 27, and 28, respectively. 25. 25. 20, 25. Yeah, there we go. 25, 26, and 27, respectively. And with regard to the remaining motions, they're to approve the acquisition of the image purpose SEL curriculum and the Region 1 H-Type Grant Protect Curriculum, uh, recommended by, uh, that's by Director Escobedo under action items 29 and 30, I believe. Okay. That's the motion. Do, I, do we have a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion? I'm just wondering, just to make sure. Uh, these, on these renewals and whenever we get this, uh, for example, you mentioned Mrs. Escobedo. Does she, who, you approve it and Mrs. Escobedo, is there any way that you all consult with like the directors or to, with the principals, with teachers? Is there, what are you using to make sure that these programs that we're renewing and that we're using 
are are liked and they're they're well accepted by by the staff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Here's Ms. Covello. She can elaborate a little. I, I'm just wondering because sometimes you hear you know some some people complain about something and and I just want to make sure that we're taking their concerns. How are we doing that? Taking everybody's Go ahead, uh, concerns. Covello. The items that I have in front of you today is an amended for an SEL uh, curriculum that we will be utilizing for our students at the Alternative Center and our secondary high schools. Uh, because of the increase of vaping, it helps us meet one of the requirements for Senate Bill 114. So uh, that was a recommended uh, curriculum that was brought uh, through Region 1 and through Mr. Uh, Aguilla, who is the discipline uh, so like director. So research-based yes. and, uh, and yes. all well That, that by one comes research-based. Okay. And then the grant that I'm bringing to you in item 30, that is a Region 1 uh, human trafficking youth prevention education program that is mandated that we do train our students uh, to make sure that they uh, are aware of the human trafficking uh, issues that are going on. It is a grant that will be delivered through two 45-minute uh, classes for our fifth, eighth, and eleventh graders. Grants and are that's, awesome. that's what the grant that's what the grant has. Okay. So just to make them aware. Thank you. And you're welcome. I'll, I'll supplement the motion to include the TASB pest control agreement in item okay. 25. I didn't mention it. Okay. At this time, we have a motion to approve item 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. We have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. At this time, let's have a motion to approve. Uh, Jay, we can have a motion to approve item 31 and 32. We can do that. This is a motion to approve the implementation of Mark for Schools as, pro as proposed by Coordinator Olivares under action item 31 and to approve the ESC Library Cooperative Renewal um, uh, presented by Director Nidia Benitez action item 32. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Noe Castillo. Any discussion? No. I think uh, 31 was a grant, 32 is with library science. I think you'll provide uh, all kinds of books and things uh, to our students. With that said, if there's no more discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Okay, let's go to item, Jay, can we have an, uh, a motion to, to approve item 33, 34, 35? Yeah, a motion to approve the teacher incentive allotment designation fees and the library pol library policy manual. Those are proposed under 33 and 34 respectively and also uh, to adopt the district's uh, adoption of and participation in the Effective Schools Framework Focus Support Grant, ESF, FSG, uh, TIL participation proposal that's presented as item 35. Any more discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Do we have a motion for uh, Jay for 36 and 37? Yeah, I motion to approve uh, the continuation of the Amplify ELAR professional development and Great Minds professional development programs as proposed by Director Ermelinda Ayala under items 36 and 37 respectively. Okay, they're, I believe they're all grant related, It's not mm -hmm. costing any money to our district. Do I have a second? A second. A second by Noe Castillo. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, Mr. J. Pena, can we have a motion on 38 and 39? Yeah, we, uh, this is a motion to approve the 2023-2024 uh, DIP, this District Improvement Plan, the Campus Improvement Plan, and the Comprehensive Needs Assessments and Family Engagement Policy submitted to the Board under Action Item 38 by Executive Director Gonzalez, and also a motion to approve the 2023-24 BF ESL Comprehensive Staff Development Plan and Stipend Criteria under BE Exception ESL Waiver. And that motion, will, that's under uh, items 39 and 40. So we, we do okay, 38 do and 40. The, yeah. Let's go to approve, okay. Approve 38, 39, and 40. Yes. Do we have a second? A second. Any more discussion? And uh, real simple. Uh, um, I believe that all these things are coming from a grant, correct? Uh, I think on 39, 39 and 40 for Mr. Martinez. Mr. Martinez, they're coming from yeah. a grant, correct, sir? Yeah, so basically they're coming from the allotment. Yes. It's not by costing the district a penny, it's coming from the district. It's coming from the state. We have to spend 10% because some teachers are not certified, and that 10% equals to... So the stipend is for how much for each teacher? $1,000, sir. For uh, anybody who's... Uh, who's uh, is bilingually certified and having bilingual students in the course. Okay. And, and then I think Mrs. Gonzalez is going to distribute a multiple choice test on the <laughs> district approval plan. And okay. 
from the items. Okay. Any, <laughs> any more discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, let's go to item 41, 41 and 42. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll motion to approve. Uh, it was, it's uh, Director Rolando Barrera's proposed collaboration with the University of Texas MD Anderson and the school district to begin the prevention in Susmanos pilot project that's presented as item 41, and also to approve Director Villarreal's recommendation for the 2023-2024 RGV lead membership, which is presented as item 42. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Item 43, I'm going to discuss a little bit of item 43. Item 43 is considering to take possible action on providing a stipend for campuses who obtain a 96% attendance rate for, I'm going to use for the third and fourth six weeks. And uh, I'm thinking that every single, if they can get to 96% attendance, their attendance is going to be able to pay for whatever stipend we get. And I'm here to just, we didn't put a number and uh, maybe $100 would be good to, and then this $100 would go to teachers, these would go to cafeteria employees, they would go to janitors, they would go to secretaries. If you can establish 96%, we need to get our kids back in school. And I think the ones that can really help us out is the staff. And if they do get to 96%, we should compensate them. And the great thing about it is that if they get all these kids back in, the number of kids is gonna pay for whatever we're gonna give all these people at that particular campus. The great thing is there's a thing called WADA, okay? And WADA is where you get paid for all the other things, whether bilingual, special ed, and that's where we can make, not a lot of money, but that's where we make some money from the WADA. So if, if we can get those kids, we're gonna get it in twofold. First, the state's gonna provide more money because we have better attendance, and then because they're attending school, we're gonna get WADA, correct, Mr. Peña? Am I right or not, sir? You're right, sir. Okay. With that said, I, I, I think it would be nice for, and that would be an incentive for campuses to get their kids back to school. So where is it said, can we have a motion like that? A mo uh, um, uh, and uh, verbatim motion to I'll, approve I'll just item say, 43. I'll just say, <laughs> considering take possible action on providing yeah. a stipend to campuses who obtain a 96% attendance rate for the third and fourth six weeks and giving every single employee, whether it be cafeteria, whether it be janitorial, whether it be clerks, everybody in that campus gets $100. And, and if I may, just, I just have one recommendation that you might want to add to the motion, is that that money, let's say there's 100 employees in that campus that, that, that the district cut the check, not to the employees, but to the campus, and the campus pays those checks mm -hmm. to each employee, because uh, it's really an incentive, it's not a stipend, not a bonus. I looked this up already uh, with TAS. So, but we make the checks under yeah. the employees' names, correct? We make the check, for example, to uh, Roque Guerra, to the fund, to the principal, and then the principal would make the checks to each think, employee. I think that's an and excellent because idea. That, because, one, we don't know how many there are, okay. and you give it to the principal, or to the principal's fund, the campus fund, and then the campus would pay each employee because they know who the employees are. The other way, it goes I, into I, I payroll. That's, that's anyway. an excellent idea. I, I'm just having trouble with it because it was an oral presentation. So I, didn't, I, don't, I don't have any substance on the on the item, but a motion Are we to, voting yeah. for it? Are we voting for it? Yes. We're yeah, voting a, for it. Yes. Yeah, I'm just saying, the the, I mean, the, the motion's problem. fine the way it is. Yeah. I just want to the, Okay, so that's more administrative, right? It's yeah. administrative right. that it wouldn't be to each employee. It would be to the I campus and the campus. What I'm saying is we give it to the principal. The, the principal distributes the money to the individual. Exactly. Patient, which is a good thing. I, I think, think we need to get idea. kids back in school. I have a motion. Yeah, yeah. for the water. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Real, and it's third, fourth, and fifth. Yes, we no, yeah, we'll call it, let's try it out for the third and fourth. Third and, and fourth. If only. it works out, we'll approve the fifth later. So you want to, you want to, okay. So you want to just try it out to see what it does. And, right. it and does. it's going to pay itself with the improved attendance. Exactly. And not only that, we have water. And what is water? It's uh, weighted. Average daily and, attendance. And, yeah. they, and what that means is if, if, if their more. kids are special aid, you get paid. If they're bilingual, you get paid. If they're uh, whatever, K, K, uh, career and technology, technology you get paid. If, if they are, uh, you, you get paid. The, there's a lot of money to be had in all the notations that the kids have. So when the state's gonna give us some money to pay for it, but the water is where we're really gonna benefit. Okay, I agree with that. But now that we're speaking of this, how is our truancy department, how are they doing? Or how are they taking care of the attendance issue? The who's who's, who's the on that? Department. 
Every week, Miss, we have a district personnel that's housed uh, in the data processing. Uh, they send weekly reports out and we all get them. Uh, just a matter of fact, today we came up with a committee of principals from the east side, west side, uh, to start to look at that and come up with campus incentives, uh, you know, to make sure that we're providing the information, we're recruiting. We also have a phone system that automatically, when a student is absent, the parents get a call at a certain time during the day. We find that in high schools, many times, you know, parents. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I'm a mother of, you know, three kids in, or two in the district. And I would get those calls, but then if I try calling back, I would never get an answer because, you know, my daughter would tell me, oh, um, I was there late. And I say, well, let me make sure, you know, I want to make sure. And I would never get across to some, so who, do we have somebody in Truancy that's answering phone calls? Is there a number where all parents can be calling back like that, that uh, automated voicemail leaving and saying, if you have any questions, you want to speak to a person in Truancy, this is, you know, or help getting your, some parents need help getting their kids to school. Mm -hmm. Do we have somebody that's helping them with resources and ideas and, and yes, help? Our truancy officers are assigned to the campuses, so high schools have their own truancy officer. Uh, Rio High, since there are 1,700 students, they have two persons assigned to them. Uh, in the middle schools, they share, uh, but every campus in the district has a truancy and officer. What's the what's the penalty whenever they they're they're being charged parents with a? After there's different uh, policies in placement, so when a student is absent three or more days, a first letter goes out. So parents, all parents, when they're absent three days. Uh, you know, or more, they get the first letter. Then another three days, six days, they get a second letter. Nine days, they get a third letter. So that's part of the process. The, the, the problem and we what's had, the yeah, penalty at the end yeah. of the day? The, the In problem, secondary? Okay. No, I was going to say something. Uh, once upon a time, judges could go out there and give tickets to parents. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. the state made it almost impossible to give tickets. We used to have courts, literally, we used to have courts at, at the high schools. And, and, and giving tickets, we had to have courts because the, the parents weren't taking the kids. But the state made it so difficult in the legislative session that they almost kind of banned us from doing that. At that time, it was working, but we, they have to do a lot of bad, bad, bad things of not showing up to school before we can take them before JP. Or before, I think it was eight or ten days, you're already in front of JP, that JP was going to give the parent a ticket for whatever it was, and it was pretty good. But now it's become very, very difficult. And 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 so I no want to and I'm gonna say something, man. And this is what I'm gonna say: we have to do incentives. We have to do this thing. But at the end of the day, we we'll look at it next year. And the twins, if if the twinsy department is, is ain't working, well, we take them back to the classroom. But the question is, let's give everything we have to try and make it work. And if it doesn't work with twinsy, well, we got eight of them. Well, we put them back in the classroom. Can I amend my motion to open up discussion on another item that's related to this one? Okay. I amend the motion to approve item. 43 with uh, excluding fifth, uh, the fifth grade as noted, but also item 46 as a, as a, as presented in the board packet. I know both of them are under oral no, no, presentation. No, 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 the 46, Mr. 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 Pe I talked to Mr. Peña, Mr. Peña says that he can handle this and uh, we don't need to give an opportunity to hire, basically to give an opportunity to change these things that uh, basically he's saying that he wants this to attack all the attendance. Right? So this will I, on table 46, situation. I want to table yes. that because yes. Mr. Peña is telling me he can, he's going to change these but things. But just so. to open up for discussion because okay. I think it's within so, the vein that, okay. that, that she's. So can we, do we have a, a motion for item 43? We have a, um, a second, correct? Yeah. Any so, more discussion? So then the motion would be to approve item 43 as presented, uh, excluding the uh, okay, I'm going to repeat it. Uh, yeah. We have uh, basically considering to take possible action on providing a stipend to campus employees and like Mr. Baltasar said, to give it to the principal who will in turn give it to the employees who achieve 96% attendance for the third and fourth six weeks and if everything goes right, we give it to them in the fifth six weeks. Okay. okay. So the third and fourth six weeks. Okay. So that's a motion, Mr. Peña. Uh, I'll second that okay. motion, yeah. No, I'm, you make that motion <laughs> as, as presented. <laughs> Right, I'll, I'll make that motion as, as presented. presented. Yeah. John, you have a second? John, 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 second? Okay, any more discussion? If not, all those in favor signify yeah. by saying aye. 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 Your all excitement opposed, is sign. contagious. It's okay. contagious. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is another motion. It's an oral I'll be honest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about it, but it's, uh, we're, we're missing a lot of teachers in, in in sciences mm. and special ed and a lot of things. We once upon a time bought uh, out uh, some 
some contracts of teachers and they couldn't come back for five years. It is considered to take possible action on removing the five-year agreement exemption and I'm, I'm, uh, for the early notification of resignation incentives. And Mr. Salazar says we cannot use secondary or math or anything, but it would be at the discretion of, of, of our staff, our principals, and we hire at the end. But we need math teachers. We need science teachers. We need a lot of these teachers who left to other districts, and we need to try and bring them back. All right, so the motion would be for item 94, uh, 44 to consider it would be to remove the five-year preclusion. Uh, exemption. Uh, or the yeah. exemption for the early notification resignation exactly. incentive, period. So, to, period. Exactly. Right. And that, the idea is to try and get yeah. some of our teachers. We had some teachers leave. Hopefully we can get them back. And at the end of the day, it's up to the administration to recommend, but we, us a board to at the end ultimately hire them. So we don't feel that these teachers, some of them are not there. We, the board, can say no at the end. But you're saying that that would only be for UIO events? They can't be teachers of four subjects? Well, at the end of the day, we can't even say that. It's up to the, to the, to oh, the superintendent and everything. But I, I, I would say that it's very difficult to hire these teachers and put them, in, in my opinion, put them in sports because we're hiring them for academics. You know, we're bringing them back for academics. But if they're going to go do sports and they're going to be out half the time, we've kind of defeated the process. So but right. we cannot yeah. put that and in, and in if the I may, if I may, if I may, uh, Mr. Villarreal. Uh, before, doctor, if an employee left or was on the verge of, should I retire, should I leave the district, we would offer an incentive for them to leave. Mm -hmm. So we'd pay them X amount of dollars based on their years of experience and their last, uh, their top three years average. But then as part of the payment, we'd say, but you can't come back for five years. So basically what we're doing is we're taking that away. So you can come back a year later if you want. Okay, and you lost me just in the to coach academic UIL events only. No, we they can't. Be eligible. Anybody, we took anybody. Yeah. But of course, we're only going to hire people that we need. Okay. So we don't need anybody in, in UIL. We're not going to hire them. If it's primarily English, math, and science, well, that's who you're going to okay. advertise. The but basically, we're getting rid of the five year yes, I requirement that they yes. have to stay. So the out. ENRI, it was just a contractual, it's a con it was a contractual provision that said five years. So it's a waiver of a contractual provision. Exactly. We're, so yeah. it, will not, it will not exist anymore. The, the great thing okay. about it is that principals can recommend, the superintendent then recommends, then it comes to us and we at the end say yes or no. So we, we, we hold the key, simply put, at yeah. the end. We're waiving, but, but, yeah. but we do need math teachers. We do need science teachers. We need special ed teachers. We need ELR, English language and, and reading. We need those teachers desperately. So at the end of the day, if they bring another teacher, let's say, I don't want to, but let's say a teacher we don't need, I'm not even going to mention the subject, and we say we don't think it, it's justified, we as a board can say no yeah. at the end. Just Mr. for the record, that's what we're doing. It's, yeah. Right. Mr. Salazar, can we add for the next meeting where we can go over some staff that we have that, has, that have masters in math, reading, and offer them, uh, the ones that we already have, can we offer them incentives to go into the classroom? Yeah. Yes. We already do, ma'am. You do? Yes. And, they, they and we can have a little presentation yeah. next time, sir, as to what we provide, what stipends and what subjects. Right. Okay. Or do you want right is, now? Is Dr. That, Salinas that, can let us know what subjects. Okay, we, let's, we let's, can, go, let's go on yeah, this. Yeah, we can, can talk can, about can this we, in the approve, close. Can we approve this and then and we can have yes. that discussion? I'll second. Okay. okay, second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same signs for the principals. Hey, get some money for your staffs, guys. Okay, you maybe. We'll talk about it later, Mr. Salinas. Okay. Okay. Then the next, we have some some interesting uh, uh, things are gonna. Bottom line, we need to be transparent, and uh, I'm gonna say we some things that I think have been lacking in our district. And the next one is going to be considering take possible action on making paraprofessional substitute educators auxiliary substitutes to have been with the district for at least one year. We have people that have been in our district for four and five years as custodians, as, uh, as, uh, as teacher aides, a whole list on Alera Calle State, and we still have them as substitutes. And I think they deserve to be permanent. You know, the, it, for us to have them as substitutes over three and four and five years, that would conclude, I guess, give me a list, uh, Mr. Salinas. <coughs> we have a list of those people. We have a list of the, the staff. Again? You, do you have a list of those no. people? Uh, yeah. uh, you do? I think Mr. Salinas, I, I have not, yeah. my idea, I have not asked for a list. Right. All I've asked for is, is 
we need to make, in other words, it's not right that people have worked with us four and five years, and I don't know who they are. But yeah. go ahead, Mr. Salinas, tell so us who, so who you were. Yes, sir. So good evening, everyone. Uh, at this time, I think Mr. Salazar will not mention any names, just give you a breakdown of what category they fall under. We do have currently 18 maintenance employees, auxiliary, as you see on the agenda. Teacher aides, we're at 52 teacher aides. Uh, we have 12 one to ones uh, Those would fall under the teacher aid category. And we have um, five uh, one to one aides that are not instructional. So that's the breakdown for that would qualify under the year or more um, and category. Dr. Solis, but you do have a list of Yes, we do, sir. And if you want, Doc, we could. Uh, Take that into executive the session. Can you provide so the you list to all of us, basically? Yes, sir. I have it ready for it for closed session. Yes. But and the criteria is just being with a district for one year or more? Yes. That's we do have employees, Dr. Barrera, that or substitutes that were here last year, four, four months, three months, two months. We made that cut uh, to, to fulfill the requisite of the item says one year or more. So if I'm 183 working day calendar, that would qualify as a year, depending on the calendar that I work, 226 for maintenance. If I worked, if I was here for the entire 12 months, then I would qualify for the one year. Do we have people that have worked as substitutes for three and four years, Mr. We do, sir. What's the longest that we have a substitute for, you think? I believe I found five. For how, how, five years? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's just, it's just yeah. not right. They're, yeah. And the, we're paying them right now. The only thing we're going to be paying them is retirement and health insurance, correct, sir? That is correct. With that said, can I have a motion, Mr. J.P.? I, I, I would like for us to discuss this. Um, in a, I know we can't discuss out here, but I think we could, I would want to discuss it. I, 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 I do understand what you're saying, but I have some ideas of other things that how we could get, I just wish we could discuss I, it. I don't know we can move it to the we, we can move it to the executive session. Okay. Uh, Dr. Chalinas, you can provide the list by, for executive, okay. and we can come back okay. after we come but back. I think there's a motion pending right now, so... There will be no second to that motion. No, let's second it and we, we'll, we'll leave it after we come back. Yeah, so okay. there's a motion to move it back into executive session. Yeah, and then we'll come back. All so right. is there a second for that motion? A second. Okay. okay, second. All those in favor signify by saying aye to move aye. it to executive aye. session? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, motion carries. At the next one is. Um, 45. 46. No, 46. A motion to okay. table item 46. 40, 46. Considering tape possible by action. Uh, uh, we're going to be tabling item 46. We do remember. A second. And let's go to item 47, 48, and 49. It's been brought to my attention, Mr. J. Peña, that to finish the swimming pool is going to cost us only $36,000, between thirty six and 40000 So can we just get this thing out of the way and just finish this pool so we can get it out of the way? It's 36 to 40, and all we're going to have to move is the restrooms, get in restrooms, <coughs> and, get, and get some a wall to protect. So people won't see, but for 36,000, it's been a thing that's been out there and been out there and been out there. I think it's time that we finish this and 36 to 40,000 dollars to, and that's, that includes, correct me if I'm wrong, everything, decking, finishing the pool, basically a ring swimming pool, according to what I was told, correct, Mr. Mena? Yes, Mr. Mena, that's correct. We had, we reached out to the vendor and they came and checked and they've been checking it periodically and they say that it is in good standing condition. And that is an email that we received on the amount. And in and, and, and talking to the people, they tell me not only, not only is it good, but they're going to give us a five-year warranty on the swimming pool. So even if when we approve that for five years, if that swimming pool goes back, they're going to repair it free of charge. We have to, I think we need to take this problem away, and we need to finish it. That was the challenge previously. I think we had to use the same company. Uh, that's good but news. But 36000 so, to finish it all. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just go out there. Can we have a motion like that? So the, uh, the motion is to provide it was 47, 48, and 49. No, no. It just approved the, the, uh, the item, not the other ones, just item uh, uh, 30, 48, 48 and table 47, 48, 9. Is there any possible to approve the swimming pool for 36000 right, like, So can we do the that? motion will be, yes, the motion is to table items 47 and 49 and to approve item 48 as presented. To approve, and, and let's go, yeah, to approve the, the mm -hmm. exactly, the, uh, to approve the, uh, the finishing of the swing. Yeah, so and it would way. be as presented. Yeah. And we'll use right, yeah, and also because it's an expenditure less than, yeah, it's less than 50,000. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, mo yeah, I'll motion to approve item 48 as presented. Okay. Do I have a second? I have a second. Second? 
I, I think we should table it and, and just consider a little bit, I think about it, because we're talking about not making things fast decisions. Well, I'm going to be honest, ma'am, we've been waiting. And I'm, just gonna I'm say glad you're, you're putting you know, this I, here look, because it's we've, something that we need to get done. We've, we've been waiting on this pool for seven years. But we can discuss years. it. Yeah. Well, the only thing, it, it, we're up for discussion right now. So my question is, we're not going to, $36,000 to finish a swimming pool is not a lot of money. All we have to put is restrooms. And, 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 we and can, how much is that going to cost? Well, the, the good thing about it is restrooms, are not, I don't think, are going to be that expensive. And a wall, basically. I, I just think this swimming pool, ne this problem needs to go away. And, and it's been there for five, six years, and I, I just think it's time. Yeah, a and, lot has been invested already. And, and I, just, I, I think for 36000 to 40000 it's time. And, and then later, for example, we have portable buildings all around the, the campuses. Maybe we bring a portable building and make it restrooms. There's other solutions, but we need to finish this swimming pool. And with that said, I think there's a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. At this time, under authority of Texas Government Code Section 551.071, 551.084, we are now going into the executive session. At this time, we're reconvening the open session. We're going to item 45, consider and take possible action on making paraprofessional substitute educators and auxiliary substitutes that have been with the district one year or more to become permanent employees. Do I have a motion, Mr. Penn? I mean, do it, can yeah, I have a motion? Yeah, I'm a motion to prove item 45 as presented. Second? Second. A second by Mr. Eliasar. Uh, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Let me just clarify one thing that you said, point out that these, we're already paying for these professionals. And so, because some people are going to wonder why we're getting, hiring more people, but these people are already be working okay. for the district. We're already paying okay. them. Let, let me make one tool. thing perfectly clear, okay? These people are employed in the district, have been employed for a number of years, work every single year. It's not anybody that's new. It's people that have been in our district for more than one year, and in many cases, two, three, and four, and five years. All we're doing is giving them the benefit of insurance, retirement, and them to be paid bi-weekly and uh, basically giving it the benefits of, but make no, make no mistake, it's not new hires, it are people who have been in our district for a number of years, okay? Thanks. With that said, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Okay, let's go to the uh, section eight, the closed session items. Uh, can I have a motion on eight, item A? Motion to approve item A as discussed in executive session. Second. Second. Uh, Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, motion on item B in, in closed session. Item B? I move that we approve item B. Okay, as discussed? As discussed in executive session. Okay, we have a motion. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Noe. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Abstention. Motion carries. Logged, please. Okay, Mr. Mr. J. Pena is abstaining on item B. Okay. Item C, discuss, uh, discussion on recommendation for employment to vacant positions. A motion to approve item C is discussed in the executive session. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Pope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item D, discussion on recommendations for UIL coordinator sponsor for UIL 2023-24 school year. Motion. A motion to approve item D is discussed. Second. 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 By Mr. Pope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Item E, no, 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 uh, no action. Item E, consider and take possible action on student expulsions. I have a motion to approve item F as discussed in executive session. Second. A second. Second by Mr. Pope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we, there's no action on item G and uh, no action on item F, H, but before. At this time, um, uh, let me uh, say thank you, Mr. Savas Chapa, for having us here today. Our, our intent is to go uh, to every campus. We're probably never going to have another meeting in Fort Ringo. We're going to be having <laughs> meetings at all the schools. But Mr. Chapa, thank you for having us. This is, uh, this is dear to me. This is my school. This is where I was raised in some, what, 60 some years ago. So uh, thank you for having us here. With that said, motion for adjournment. Thank you. I got beat up right there. <laughs>
<laughs> the horse really nice. That horse there was really cute.